So how do we answer those impossible CISSP questions? Well, there are five basic steps that you can follow if you're a process kind of person, kind of like I am. The first step, of course, is to stay calm. I remember the very first question I had, it made me freak out. I was kind of in panic mode because the first question I didn't recognize any of the terminology. It did not fit into any of the common body of knowledge material that I had studied. And the reason that, that it's important just to kind of stay calm, take a deep breath, is because remember in the exam that there are beta questions, and the beta questions are thrown out. They're not graded. They're not scored. They're used, uh, some people theorize, to steer the exam kind of in the direction of your expertise. And whether or not that's true, I don't know, but just remember that there are a bunch of questions that are going to be given to you that are thrown out. After that, the thing I like to do is read the question twice. Read it once slowly, read it a second time a little bit faster, try to get to the bottom of what it is they're asking. And it might still be confusing. And at that point, you look at the choices. Because sometimes the choices are gonna help you to understand what the question is actually looking for. Because you might not understand it until you look at the choices. So once you've looked at the choices, the next step would be to read the question again. And at this point, you have a better picture of what the question is actually aiming or what it's actually testing your knowledge on. And then once you've read the question, you can go with the process of elimination. So let's take an example. And I'm going to let you just kind of read this on your own as if you're taking the exam. So go ahead and maybe pause the video and take a look at this question. Okay, so hopefully you paused and you kind of went through that process on your own. So we read the question. Access authorization rules are typically derived from frameworks, standards, policies, guidelines. So you've read the options, let's, and then you read the question again. And so at this point, you're going to use the process of elimination. And if you only knew two of these words, such as let's say you knew what a framework was and you knew what policies were, you only know about 50% of, of this material. I'm not saying that's a good thing to do, but if that were the case, you would look at option A. You know what a framework is. A framework is a collection of controls, such as the ISO 27000 series. Let's say you don't know what a standard is, but you know what a policy is. A policy is very high level. A policy sets the tone. It doesn't necessarily get into details. When we're talking about access authorization rules, you're talking about possibly an access authorization system. And if you don't know what a guideline is or a standard, perhaps we can start ruling things out. So a framework we know is a collection of controls. Are controls the same as rules? No, because rules are more specific. So then we go, okay, that one's out policies. I know what a policy is. A policy is very high level. Are rules policies? Well, yeah, but when you're talking about access authorization, it seems like those would be fairly specific, so we can rule out policies. How about standards and guidelines? Well, if you use common sense and you think about what a guideline is, is a guideline required? Is a guideline some type of rule? Probably not. So what I would pick would be standards. Let's go with another example, and I'm going to give you a minute to just kind of read this question and I'm going to pause the video here. So go ahead and pause the video and take a look at it and follow those five steps. And let's see what you come up with. Okay, so a security control that has changed from saying the system must log organization defined events to cloud applications must log the creation of cryptographic keys is an example of which of the following. We have scoping, tailoring, supplementing, and augmenting. And so in one of our previous videos, we covered the difference between ta scoping, tailoring, and supplementing. So hopefully you know the difference. But if you don't, let's say you only knew what scoping and supplementing were, or let's say you only knew what tailoring and augmenting were. So they're essentially, they're wanting you to, to basically explain the difference or no, show that you know the difference between scoping, tailoring, and supplementing. I don't believe augmenting is covered in the common body of knowledge. And so you're going to run into this questions that are, that seem like they are outside of the common body of knowledge. But in those cases, again, we're going to use the process of elimination here. When you think of a scope, such as a, a telescope or something, you're taking something that's either very far away or very small, and you're making it bigger so that you can see it and you're getting rid of all the stuff of, around it. And so that's what a scope would be. So you're not, you're not scoping in this. And we know that augmenting, so if you know what augmenting is, it's when you enhance a control by making it stronger. So this isn't augmenting, this is, this could be considered augmenting because if you look at this, you might think it's augmenting by making it stronger. Well, it's not necessarily making it stronger, it's making it more specific. And so you might be thinking, well, supplementing is supplanting based on your last video, one of your videos, but supplementing is when you actually take the term cloud applications and you specify which cloud application. So by ruling this out, we know it's not scoping. Scoping actually applies to taking controls out of a framework or taking components of a control out of a framework. Tailoring, this looks like it fits into tailoring. Supplementing would be specifying which applications. 
and augmenting would be strengthening the bit length of the cryptographic keys. So our answer is tailoring. Hope this helps you to understand a little bit better how to answer the CISSP questions. Head over to cisprep.net where we have over 1,200 practice questions and our free super study guide. If you head over to our homepage here, there's a free quiz that you can take that has questions similar to that that we showed in this video. You just click on that little free quiz, free practice test, and then you're going to click start, qu start quiz here. And it's timed, of course. It's going to be just like the exam. You're not going to have a domain given to you. You're just going to have the question right out of the gate. And it's going to be here. It's just like the exam. And you have to choose. It doesn't tell you the domain, and it doesn't give you the answer. So you click the answer that you think, and then you just click next. It's exactly like the exam. You can't mark something to check later, and you can't go back. So that's something that changed with the recent, uh, the 2018 update. So just like the exam on our website, you're practicing here. And I'm just going to go through all of these. I'm, I'm just guessing. I'm not, I don't know the answers. Each quiz is going to be different every time you take it. The numbers will be, the options will be rearranged. And also the questions won't be in the same order. So for example, this particular question number seven here, it won't be number seven next time you take this. So you can take the same exam different times and it's going to, it's going to have a different experience for you. And so we're just guessing, guessing. I'm probably going to pause this video and skip to the end. And then you have similar to the exam. You have these, these sorting questions where you're going to drag and drop. So at the end of the exam, you're going to have this finish exam or finish quiz button. And at this point it is going to give you some advice. So try to do the best you can when you're taking these exams. Click finish, and then it's going to show you which domains you did well in and which ones you did horrible in. And this is exactly like the exam. You're not going to get, you're not going to get the actual answers, but we have done that. So we provide, if you click view questions, it will show you what you got wrong. And instead of feeding the actual knowledge to you, I mean, we do a little bit of that, but what we try to focus on is, is teaching you how to answer and how to look at the question and how it was worded to trick you at the end of your practice. For example, here we have, this is an incorrect. So there's an explanation here of, of how things are just designed to confuse you and how you can maybe look for the bottom line within this. And if you follow those five steps that I presented in the beginning, you should be good to go with these. And so once again, it gives you the domain and then it tells you how to look at the question, but we don't feed you the, the information like most practice exams do. Those are good. I'm not saying that those are bad. I'm just saying that we do a different style here. And hopefully that appeals to some of you because I, I was not prepared. I took a lot of different practice questions and a lot of different practice exams online and they, none of them helped me to prepare for what the exam experience would be. So that's why we designed this website and hopefully it benefits everyone. And once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.